today we're looking to see how um, we get these um, dust shields off, um, especially the one on the other side. Um, I was getting a scraping noise and it's rusted so much it's lost all its strength and it was rubbing against the brake disc. Sorry for the state of my brake discs, the car's been sat for a month, um, so it's looking a bit worse for wear. So let's see, it's my first problem, it's going to be, yeah, I thought. And I don't have an impact. I don't have an impact driver. Damn. So continuing on from the other day, I couldn't get these nuts out, these screws out, so I went and bought one of the tools. You always, either how, doesn't matter how many tools you buy, um, you still need more. So impact wrench. Halfords, nothing crazy. Supposedly, basically you hit it and it will turn. wanting to go well, I think it is now bit by bit it seems to be coming given feels like it yeah. so I've turned the steering wheel so I get more access to the back of the caliper um, very quickly these pads are low I'll check the inside one see if I can get a few more weeks out of them um, but the car is about to go off to be tuned so I don't really want to put brand new pads in but, but we'll see so we need to get the caliper, caliper ones undone so everything's normally a 14 or a 12 on a Mazda and it's a 14. Not too bad. Before I drop the caliper, what I want to do is get a tie wrap so you can tie wrap the caliper up so it's not hanging on this hose. Okay, so the caliper will pretty much slide off. Got my tie wrap. I'm going to hang it up here as all the rust falls out of the caliper. Wow, look, build up a rust in the back there. Good old, good old Russ on a Mazda. What? Oh, I can't believe it. Anyway. Okay. Now we've got some ridiculously low pads. Well, pretty low. Ping them out. There we go. Nearly down to the... They're pretty bad. But I've got another set. I just need them to last a tiny bit longer. Yeah, there's still a tiny bit of meat on them. Right, okay, so we've got that off. What we need to get now is get the carrier off the back here. That is bigger, that looks like a 17. Let's see if I guess right. Yes, I did. Yeah, I thought that would be a bit, get some extension on that. Just gonna have to move the camera quickly. A bit of physics at work. And it comes undone. Let's do the other one while we're at it. I am wanting to refurb all of the front suspension. I had a subframe lined up, but it fell through. Ooh, should have been paying attention. 
All right, so there's your carrier out. So in theory, now we've taken those bolts out the front of the disc. Yeah, the disc comes off. So now I haven't seen any instructions. It looks like what I was hoping. I haven't seen any instructions how to do this. Haynes manual doesn't have anything more than changing your brake pads. So it looks like your bearing and everything is in this container here. There's then four bolts on the back. So we're gonna get oh, those four bolts out. Hopefully this will then come forward. You can then take this piece out, put in the new shield, bolt it back together. And in theory, it's all gonna be great. I don't know if it actually helps, but it's always good to try and get some crap off the back of the bolt. How flimsy they are anyway. The, the new ones aren't much better, but... Yeah, there's holes in the guard. It's all a bit, a bit rubbish. Right, so that actually looks like a 12. So we're going down... Oh, it's a Mazda. It's got to be a 12. Right, so let's see if we can get one of these undone. Guessing I'm going to need some uh, assistance again, so sorry, I'm going to move it back again. Get my bit of. Yep, yeah, it's turning all the way. Ooh, it's turning all the way through, so. I'm now working on these ones. A little bit of gentle persuasion. There we go. So, spin that back up a bit. So that's the last bolt to come out. Get a little tumper. Nothing happens. So my friends at Amazon have done next day delivery on this. So this is the second tool I've bought to try and get these um, hubs out because Mazda designs it that they basically slip into a machined hole and you've got to pull them out. I've got a normal hub puller, which presses on the spindle and pulls out, but this doesn't have a spindle, so you have to get a different hub puller. So, next day delivery on this. So, that's like a standard hub puller one. That's gonna to bolt to your um, the hub. This screws into that. And then basically you hope that this is heavy enough to basically pull the, the bearing out of that um, machined hole um, and hope that the rust isn't too bad. So uh, let's put this together, give it a go. Probably gonna take a long time. Okay, so I'm on the other side of the car just because I've got more space to uh, show how this goes. So that's how your hub puller will go on. You then, I use my normal plug nuts, these are in terrible condition. I've got nice black ones to go with my wheels but didn't realise they were steel and they just rust. That's great enough. Anyway, we'll get some new ones at some point. We'll put the old ones back on to them. Basically, to understand what's happening is we're trying to because this is bolted from behind with four bolts, we're trying to separate this part, pull it out of the upright. No movement straight away. There you go. Should have disconnected the ABS before, but it hasn't done anything particularly bad. And then this is the, the shield that comes off this part. You put the new shield in between these two bits, and then you've got to put it back on. But I'm going to clean up this face and then copper ease it as well. I guess they're my mistakes. Well, they are my mistakes, but this car fights me at every turn. So it came out to this point. I was undoing the ABS sensor and without any real effort, the wires just popped out of the back of the ABS sensor, so the ABS sensor's broken. So they're 60 pounds. I'm looking at some second-hand ones on uh, eBay. Oh, yeah, I'll just try and get one of those. So that is a, just be aware then, make sure 
you undone that nut before you get involved in uh, in pulling it. I thought they, there was going to be more of a um, shoulder in here and it was going to pull out further, but it came out and it surprised me, so that's annoying. So now I'm going to clean this all up. Um, yeah, basically just clean it all up. Got a wire work, a wheel. I'm going to use the drill and a, and a wire wheel. Get in here, spin it up. I'm going to clean the inside of the, the hub bit that came off as well. And then basically you put the, the new shield back on and uh, we'll go from there. Oh wow, that's it. See, I don't know if you can see, but the, there is a definite build up. So I might get a screwdriver and see if they flip off. Yeah, so sometimes you need to get something in there. So that's getting off these little bits of metal. Oh, that's much better. What you're left with on the uh, hub side of things Still think that's all right but this is obviously the uh area that was sits in there again gonna need to clean that all up so let's uh crack on with that so i've cleaned it up the best that's going to get really around there used a bit of sandpaper as well it's pretty smooth that on the other hand, mm, yeah, that's all right. So, a bit of copper ease, just gonna put a layer of it on there and hope that in future that just gives that, that little bit of ease to come out. So, this is the new plate rear shield, they're not made out of very thick stuff, which is why they rust out. Um, but these new ones, they're not very expensive, uh, about £17. So that bolts between your hub and your upright. When you've got your hub, you want the ABS sensor at the top. And then in theory, it goes like that. Oh wow, when you've uh, got all the muck off it, it just slides on. Hit your bolts again, put them in from the back. Right. I couldn't find any torque wrench settings so I'm just doing them up tight. Yep, I have to pull the muscle in my arm. That's what happens when you're an office worker. Don't play the pace. This is the carrier that came off with my old pads pretty much done. Looks like they've got metal backing plates and then the clips. I've just got a set of Bosch. I try not to go too cheap. I haven't got anything that's race spec or anything like that. Um, I did put some Mintex on a different car and all they did was squeal. Did my head in. Um, Bosch pads, I'd always, I'd always go for, um, if you're going for a standard pad, I'd always go for a make like Mintex, Brembo, probably Bosch, it's kind of make our trust, um, not get into some of the other stuff. I've had cheap brakes before and don't really want to be skimping on it, a bit like cheap tires. So, got some backing pads here as well. So, shield put on the back there. Let's pop these ones off. definitely uh, had their day. Get your wire brush, brush get into the, where the pads are running, clean that up a little bit because you don't get new fitting kits. You get a bit of the dust off these but mind your rubbers. Really not that critical, but these bits are. So, people have probably got different thoughts on this, so I'm not telling you what to do, but I'll put a little bit of copper ease just in these bits where it runs. 
a lot. Just a little bit, you don't want it. Uh, yeah, that's a bit muggy. There we go. Just a little bit, that's all I'm doing. Okay, so. Um, I need to get the disc on first. Obviously this disc, um, it looks this bad because the car's been sitting for a month, but there's a tiny lip. I would normally say of a normal thing, you get two pad sets per one disc for a disc. So that's what I'm going to do. All right, and you remember how bad these screws, really hard these screws were to get out. So, what do you think we're going to do? We're going to put a bit of copperies on. If I get you back into uh, staring at things. So the disc is on. I'm going to put a bit of copperies because all they're doing is locating. It's going to get a screwdriver. So that one's that one. That's going to get a screwdriver. Then get those done up. Obviously the wheel will hold them so they're never going to come out. Nice and tight, hand tight, it's fine. Not hitting the shield or anything. So that's that one. And then we've got the big bolts to hold this carrier on. So they are a 17 socket. Okay, so I haven't got a torque wrench with me, but the front mounting brackets for the calipers and mounting brackets are 90 newton meters or 66 pound foot. So, or hard. Do as I say, not as I do. Right, that's on. So now we've got the brake pads. Again, I just put a little bit of copperies where the uh, piston or whatever is going to sit. Uh, won't sit on the outside one, so that's fine. So we'll slide these on. There we go. And we'll get the other one, which we've got the copperies on. And we'll slide that one in also. Then I'm going to cut the tie rack for the caliper. Loads of. Oh, the other side had lots of rust shavings in, so this does as well. Not the greatest thing in the world, is it? Right, so let's see if it is a just a push one. If it's just a push one then you can push back with yeah it is so keep an eye on your master cylinder that you're not flooding brake fluid everywhere because it eats through paint and everything else it's good to know that these are just a screw type I mean just a press type and not a screw type so you don't need a special tool for that Actually, it's all I do have, so uh, anyway. Right, okay. So now we've got that cover out of the way. So now we should, yep. Yeah, so now we've put it back in. Get your bolts again. Put your uh, caliper on. It turns here, so I have to find out what spanner size that is. Probably a 17 or a 19. Let's find out. So the uh, the guide pin bolts, which are the ones we're doing, they are 26 newton meters or 19 pound foot. Or again, hard. You don't have a torque wrench with you. Feels right. After working on cars, 
a long time you start to under, you start to kind of get a feel for what strength you can do calipers the pistons push right back but that's what a sliding brake caliper does obviously when the piston comes out we would take up that that slack but that's how they work they slide like that not what i can do about the rust until i drive it down the road so that other than the abs is how you do it same on the other side so that's done so that's how to replace your shields and obviously very quickly it's very easy to put a pair of uh, brake pads in, easy.